In this lesson, we'll take a look at the dplyr select function. You already know that the dplyr package gets loaded when we load the tidyverse package. Now we tend to load tidyverse in this course because we use many of the packages that tidyverse loads. So in fact, for this lesson, we could just load a library dplyr and go on, but we just made a habit of loading tidyverse because later on we'll be doing dplyr functions and we'll also be doing additional functions which come from other packages of tidyverse. Okay, So we are loading library tidyverse and of course we are still going to work with our NYC flights 13 package which contains among others a table called flights. So let's dive right in to an example of select. So here we are issuing the command select flights we are using the select function and we are saying we want to select from the flights table. This is the general structure of all dplyr functions, most dplyr functions, where we give an operation name, which is the name of the function, select or filter or arrange or mutate. We'll be looking at those later. And the first argument is the name of the table that we want to operate on. And for select, the subsequent arguments are simply names of the columns that we want. As we have seen earlier in introduction to dplyr, the select function helps us to select specific columns from a data frame or a table. So the result of this operation is going to be a table containing only those three columns. Okay. Of course, select will select all the rows because it doesn't do any filtering. Okay. So here you see the first five rows of the result of this command and notice that the result contains all the rows 336,776 rows, but only the three columns that we have asked for year, month, day. So that's the basic feature of select and 90% uh, of the time we'll be using select exactly like this. Okay, But you can also do things like this. For example, if you say select year, month and you just repeat day for the heck of it. You say day, day. Now what happens is that the select function is intelligent enough to recognize that we are getting back a duplicated column and it is still going to ignore the duplicate and give us the same result that we got back earlier. Okay, So you may wonder why, why is this feature in place or why am I talking about this? It has an application and we'll see that shortly. When we work with very large tables, as is the case when we are working with real life data sets of interest, then what happens is that just having the ability to select columns by their column name alone is not sufficient. So here is a variant which says select all columns between year and day. By between year and day what we mean is in terms of the position of the columns in the original table. Okay, So we are saying start from year and keep on selecting columns up to until you come to the column day and stop there. Okay, So you can use the colon uh, operator to do that year colon day. Okay, So this is just the regular way in which the colon operator operates. As we have seen, 1 colon 5 will give you the vector 1 through 5. Year colon day is going to give you the vector of columns year through day. Okay, So that's all. It's a range of columns. So and you then get of course the same result because we are still selecting the same columns uh, because year, month and day are contiguous columns in our data frame. You might have noticed that I ended my previous sentence with the word uh, or with the phrase data frame, right? whereas flights is a tibble. Okay. Now from this point on I'll be using the terms data frame and tibble somewhat interchangeably because tibbles are after all data frames and all of the dplyr functions also work on regular good old normal data frames as well. Okay, so the argument that you pass to table or any of the, not to table, to any dplyr function, you can pass a good a regular table or just a good old data frame. So when I say data frame or table, just consider that I'm saying almost the same thing, except in very few specific scenarios, the two are interchangeable. Okay, so now here we are going to look at the converse of what we just looked at. Select all columns except those between year and day. right? That is, you mention a certain set of columns and say I want everything else. Of course, by now you know how R is probably going to do this. The minus. right? So you can say minus 
year colon day. Okay, so that means other than this range of columns give me everything else. So you can use minus. Okay, uh, the parentheses around year colon day, I have included that uh, because you now have two operators, right? You've got the minus operator, you've got the colon operator. And I'm at this point, I'm not exactly sure which one has, hot, has got a higher precedence because generally the unary minus operator has very high precedence. Okay, so because of that, I'm not sure how it'll work if I don't put the parentheses. So for safety, I just put in the parentheses, right? So I'm saying this range minus of this. And of course, you're going to get everything else. Not all the columns are shown here because of course the width, the console, my console was not wide enough. And so it's telling you what other columns are here right now. Continuing with the same idea, we can do things like this. Select all columns except some specific ones. Once again, I'm sure you might have already guessed how to do this. Just use, you know, create a vector of those columns, departure time, departure delay, comma. So minus C, you're creating a vector and you can say minus C and you get those. Okay, so everything other than these two columns would will be returned. Now notice I didn't put a colon, so only these specific two columns are being excluded. And you get back the result as expected. Again, when we work with real life data sets, you may easily have a data set that has 100 columns. Okay, so just looking through the names of columns and trying to find some specific columns, that may not be a very easy operation when you have so many columns. And therefore, dplyr provides even more facilities for us to deal with columns. So for example, here I'm saying select flights, that is from the flights table, select all the columns whose column names contain the string delay. In this is case, uh, case sensitive, right? So delay in lowercase, right? So what it's saying is look at all the column names and get for me only those columns which can, whose names contain the string delay. And it so happens in this table, there are only two such columns, departure delay and arrival delay. So that's another useful piece of functionality when you're dealing with very large tables. You may also guess that you have functionality like this. So find for me, select all the columns whose names start with the letters ARR in lowercase. And once again, it so happens that in this table, there are two such columns, arrival time and arrival delay. So here are some additional helper functions for select. Starts with, we've already seen this. Ends with, we've not seen it, but you can guess how it works. Contains, we've looked at that. And matches a regular expression, we will not be getting into this. But if you know the language of regular expressions, then you can be even more uh, selective and powerful when you do your searches. And also, num range x 1 to 3. Okay, so for example, this will match x1, x2, and x3. Right, so you're giving a number range and a string. So what it's going to do is it's going to match each of these things here. So if you've got columns like, you know, something 1, something 2, something 3, etc. So all the columns that have that. Okay, so you could do that as well. Now we come to a useful feature and that is called everything. Now remember earlier I said that when you duplicate column names, then uh, dplyr quietly ignores the duplicate column name and shows it only once. This is exactly where it's useful. Now when you're working with a very large table or a very large data frame containing many columns, by large, in this context, I'm referring to something that has many, many columns. And just for convenience, you may want some of the columns to appear up front. Right? That is because when you display a table in the console, it comes, uh, the display contains the columns which are in the beginning and anything else that is spillover is just mentioned in the bottom. Right? So you don't see the data from those uh, columns which are outside of the width of the console. So to, con to facilitate certain things, what we might want to do is to just bring some of the columns to the front. And that is where everything becomes useful. That is, you're not changing anything, but you're just bringing some columns up to the front. So you could say something like this, select flights, time underscore hour, air time, and everything. So for whatever reason, we want these two columns to appear first. 
Okay, so I'm saying select these two columns and also select all the columns in this table. So what's going to happen is that time hour and air time are going to be duplicated here because when you say everything, they are also going to show up. But since dplyr ignores duplicates anyway, so the net effect of this is to simply move these two columns to the front and then have all the remaining columns. So this is a neat little trick that we can do with everything. Other than that, I don't see everything as having any other use, but this is a very significant use of everything. Okay, so what happened as a result of this is the time hour and air time came up front and all the other columns are coming here. Once again, even though everything is going to contain time hour and air time, they will still not be duplicated because dplyr doesn't show duplicated columns. So this is just a neat trick. Let's now try out some examples of the use of select. So this question says, list the flight number, departure delay, and arrival delay of flight. So we want only those three columns, flight number, departure delay, arrival delay. But we also want to list them in ascending order of arrival delay, descending order of arrival delay. Okay. So we are going to do this in two steps. First, we are saying select flights, and that's the table. And the three columns we want are flight, departure delay, arrival delay. The flight number is contained in the column called flight departure delay, arrival delay. Now don't get confused between flights, which is the table, and flight, which is a column in the table. Okay, so we are taking this and putting the results in a variable called flights s underscore sml or flights small. Okay, so then we can of course achieve our result by saying arrange flights small descending order of arrival delay. Right, so we are using two functions separately, the select function and the arrange function. Now, one thing you will see is that there are uh, many occasions where we will use several dplyr functions one after the other, right? So we are creating flight small and then we are passing it to another function, okay? Now, this is a little inconvenient and when you look at code in which you're constantly creating a temporary variable and then passing it to another function, taking maybe assigning that to some variable and then passing it to another function. When you're keeping on doing that, the code can get a little cumbersome to look at and understand. And there's a very neat mechanism in dplyr called pipes, which we'll be looking at later in the course. When you use pipes, all of these things become so intuitive and nice and very easy to read. But for now, just bear with me while we do these things incrementally. Okay, that's what we said earlier, we can do it. Of course, we can also do it in R within one expression. That is, we could have said arrange and we could have put the whole select expression right here instead of the variable called flight small. We could do that, not a great solution. Pipes is the way to go, but we'll be talking about pipes later in the course. Okay, so now we are saying list the flight number, departure delay and arrival delay of flights. Again, only those three columns. List in descending order of arrival delay do it in one single R expression. So we are going to obviously say arrange and then put the whole select and then say descending order of delay. Okay, this is what I had mentioned in the previous slide saying you can do it in one single R expression, but you can see how this expression has already become cumbersome to look at and understand. And as I said earlier, we'll be using uh, pipes later on in the course to make these things very easy to read and understand.